Hi everyone, uh, and again, uh, welcome back uh, to this series of uh, circuit question. Uh, in this question, we want to find the source voltage, which is the voltage at the sending end of the circuit. So what do we have here? We have two loads, similar to, to the previous question, but there is one slight difference that between the two loads, there is another impedance. Meaning that if you want to put this in the uh, context of a uh, real uh, power system, there, this is the substation. This is uh, the cable or overhead line. There is a load, could be a house, could be a factory. Then there is another cable moving to the another, another house. So the only difference here in this question compared to question number two is having an impedance inserted between these two. Uh, two loads, and this will change a little bit how we solve this question. So again, the two loads, we have the P and we have the power factor. We know the voltage at the last customer, which I will call it here load number number one. I will call this is load number number two. Now to find Vs again. We want to find this current I. And this current basically is this current plus this current. So I will call this is I1, and this is your I2. So I basically is equal to I1 plus I2. Again, very similar to what we started the previous question. So let's start finding I1. So I1 is equal to P divided by the voltage times the power factor. So it's equal to 20 times 10 to the power 3 divided by the voltage, which is 220. Power factor is 0 0.8. 0 .8, and this will give me a current 114 amp. This is only the magnitude. I want to find the angle. So theta V minus theta I is equal to the cosine inverse of 0 0.8, which is equal to 36.9. From this, your theta i, because theta v is equal to 0, equal to minus 36.9. And from this, your i1 is equal to 114 minus 36.9. So far, nothing changed. OK. Now, we want to find I2. Again, I2 is, is equal to P divided by the, I would call it P2, V2 power factor 2. Now, I know P2, I, I know the power factor of the load 2, but I don't know the voltage because this voltage is only across load number 1. Why it's not the same as load number two because this impedance will have a voltage drop. So we need to find this voltage. I will call it V1. So here we will have I, I1 that go through this uh, impedance. And then we will find V1 once we know, sorry, uh, V2. Once we know V2, then we can find I i2 from this from this formula so now kvl so we need to apply so we need to find v2 how we will apply kvl so apply kvl in this loop what you will have you will have your v2 will equal to i1 which is 114 angle of minus 36.9 times this impedance, which is 0 0.01 plus J 0 0.05. So this is this will give me the voltage drop here. This is the voltage drop through the impedance plus the voltage at the receiving end, which is the 220 angle of angle of zero. I will do this calculation in details, but the rest uh, just to uh, I will just give you the final answer. But please, uh, you need to uh, redo it yourself. And this is applies for any circuit question that you have to try solving it before you look into the to the solution. So from this, your V2 will equal to 114 one 
0.4 angle of minus 36.9. Now we need to convert this into polar, which is equal to 0 0.05 angle of 78.69 plus 220 angle of 0. And this would equal to uh, 5.7 angle of 41.79 plus 220 angle of zero. Okay, now we want to add two numbers in the polar format. I have to convert both into rectangular. So your V2 will equal to the 5.741.79. This is nothing but 4.25 plus J 3.8 plus this 220 angle of zero will be just 220. So this will give me 224.25 plus J 3.8. And this will give me around 224 angle of one. So this is your V2. Now I have V2. I can find I2. Okay. So let's move on. I want to find now my I2. My I2 is equal to the P2, which is the 60 times 10 to power 3 divided by the voltage, which is calculated here, which is the 224. 224 times the power factor, which is 0.86 and now we know that this is just the magnitude and this is equal to 311. Okay, now we want to find the angle of the current. Now we have to be careful that this voltage now has an angle of one, not an angle of zero from our calculations. So theta V minus theta I would equal to the cosine inverse of the 0.86, which is equal to the 30. 0.7. So your theta i will equal to 1 minus 30.7, which is equal to minus 29.7. From this, your i2 will equal to 311 angle of minus 29.7. Now I know both currents I1 and I2. Now I can find my I, my main current I here, which is basically I1 plus I2, which is equal to 114 angle of minus 36.9 plus this current, which is 311 angle of minus 29.7. Now, as we know it very well, we need to convert these two into rectangular, add them, convert them back into polar. If you do that, you will find yeah, that your current is 424 angle of minus 31.6. So now I found this current. I know this voltage here, which is found from the previous step, which is 224 angle of 1 just kvl to this loop i will need to apply kvl to this to this loop to find your vs so your vs is equal to your i which is the 424 angle of minus 31.6 times the line impedance which is 0 0.08 plus j 0.2 plus the voltage at this load which is 224 angle of 1 and again, if you do the calculations, you will find this is equal to 303 angle of 11.1 volt. So this is your, your VS. So here, introducing this impedance between these two loads, change the way or the approach of the problem. Still, you need to find I as usual. However, now you cannot assume that the the two lows will have the same voltage. This will have a different voltage that you need first to find, and then you move you move on from from there. 